we are, uh, let's see. Okay, so. All right, so when you click on the left column, the right column opens up and you'll see more icons that have to do with that category. So if you are clicking on the meeple, that would be the main one you're going to hang out on almost all the time. You will see that there is a, a select token, it looks like crosshairs kind of, a targeting, a measurement, and then um, the city of Miss status tracker. I don't know if you have that. Probably not. That's just me, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, you'll use the token selector. You have to do that in order to select your token and move it. Okay, so that's the main thing over there. Not much else to go on down there. Down at the bottom is the players list. And that lets you kind of, if we don't really use it, but it lets you connect your player to a PC so that you'll just log in and already have that PC ready to go. Uh, I think it also might give you the opportunity to send players messages. Um, maybe not. Then there's a macro bar at the bottom. We don't really use that very much in this game. There's no reason to macro your moves or anything like that. It's all kind of built in, so we don't have to worry about that. I use them to do a couple of DM macros, but I also put all your characters down here. Um, there is a mod I added that lets me, I don't think it works for you guys, but it lets me add your character sheets down there so I can just click on one of those macro buttons and it'll open your character sheet for me. So I don't have to be looking in the player section. All right, moving over to the right, of the game uh up at the top there's a bunch of icons if you go all the way to the far right to the little arrow if you click the little arrow it will collapse it into really taking it off the board and going over to the right and then the arrow again at the bottom if you click that it'll expand it into a sidebar so um let's go over those real quick the first one is the chat area this is where everything happens mechanically in the game as well as chat but we don't do a lot of chatting in the game I will sometimes push a narration over to there and, and read it out loud or whatever, but um, uh, the, just for reference. But this is where all of, the, all of the rest of the results of your moves, like you pick a move and then it gives you results and you get to choose the results of the move. There'll be little check boxes for you to pick. So we'll cover that in a little bit. There is a combat tracker. We don't really use uh, that a whole lot uh, because this is very cinematic. A little bit more loosey goosey than, uh, well, a lot more loosey goosey than D and D, <laughs> but um, but it's it flows. The fiction is what guides the combat. So there's no turns, no rounds. You just speak up when you want to do something. We try to make sure it's fair and that no one gets lost in the mix. I don't think with this group we'll have that problem. If there's a real shy player, then I will probably interrupt and go, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And I and I may do that too. It's called passing the spotlight. And you can right. also steal the spotlight from other players. So if, for example, you need to interrupt, like I want to help you, so I'm going to do this thing that's going to help you. You steal the spotlight, you do your move, and then the spotlight goes back to that person. So now, so typically what you can do is, for example, create new scene tags or story tags, and then they can use those in their move, right? So that's what you'd, you'd steal. You do something that makes it a benefit to them, and they get it back. They use that benefit as well in making their role. Okay, so yeah. we don't really use the combat tracker. It's not that important. Um, then um, you might have the journals or the actors tab. So the actors tab is next. That again looks like your little meeple. And in there, you probably don't have access to anything. You probably can't see anything in there because we haven't created a character for you. So I'm going to first off just call this John. Got it. And make it a player character. And that should, once I give you rights to it, and then, uh, Stephen, can you create your own character, or do I need to create one for you and assign it to you? I'm sorry, Stephen. That's his character's name from the last time we played. Um, <laughs> what? 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 Uh, oh. Daniel, do you want me to make you a new character, or can you create your own character sheet? I believe I can create my own. Okay. Create actor? Yeah. Create new actor. Hey. John. Stop it, Foundry. Stop it. Richard. Player character type PCs. Okay, and then Richard, we're going to assign you to Richard, which is uh, Shankopotamus. 
Yep. So, I, okay. I'm like, the, none of those names match anything like Richard. All right. <laughs> All right. So now you have your character sheet. It'll be a blank white canvas for the most part. Okay. Um, so can you find it in the actors area? I see create actor. Okay, so you don't have, I mean, hmm. I, I assigned it to you, so you should. You're the owner. John, you have John. Because no. you're John 93226, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. If you, I think what Richard. Expand some folders to get to it. Yeah, you have to. Where did that bad boy go? Let me close it and do it do it again. Okay, so um, when I open it, I see the orders create actor and create folder at the top, then search actors, then there is a folder like called folder. rifts. Yeah, so if you open the rifts folder, then we see uh, our name okay. our names no, down there, it. and I click on John and click. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Core moves, change the game, execute the move, mythos yep. logos. All right, so you have a blank canvas right now so what we would do is um we would follow the uh so anyway that's your character sheet we'll come back to that because we're not Got ready it. to make them yet i need to give you a little more background on the game so let's finish the foundry and then we'll go back to the game now uh across the top on the right you the next icon looks like a book these are the journals mm-hmm you should have some access already because I think I just made it to, yep. I said it to all players. So there is a PDF books and there's a player's guide in there. Yeah. Um, yep. So that just opens a PDF and then there's theme books and that opens um, a bunch of PDFs in the, in the tabs that go through all the different theme books. So um, basically when we, when it's time, we're going to go through this. And we're going to begin to pick your themes. You will have every character has four themes. There are two kinds of themes. There are mythos and logos. So mythos are your legendary themes and logos are your mundane, normal themes. So they would have to do with whatever your secret identity is. Uh, oh, you play champions. Okay. So you understand kind of what I'm talking about there, Marvel RPG. So you have a superhero ID basically and a normal person ID. So mythos right. and logos. You have four. At least one of them must be one type. The others can be the other type. Okay. Um, the game, the way the game progresses is a very fascinating, one of my favorite mechanics of this game. It takes time for this mechanic to ever come into play. But um, you improve your themes. You get to make them better. It's like spending experience points, you get to do things. It's called attention. And when you put attention on a theme, eventually it builds up and then you can add to your theme or do cool things. But there's also the opposite of attention, which is called fade or crack. And um, so that would be a destructive force on your theme. And when your theme fades out or cracks completely, you replace that theme with a theme of the opposite type. Okay. So it may be that your time um, using your powers, being a, a, a crime solver in this noir town, um, may be interfering with your job, which may be your logos theme. And so eventually you're taking fade and crack because you're choosing to do, and you, you have total power over this. You have control over how things fade or how things crack. I don't do that to you. Uh, right. We work that together. You say, this looks like you're cho you're making me make a hard choice. I'm going to choose. I say, I'll probably, I'll set you up. But it's up to you to decide what happens and what it affects. Or maybe it doesn't affect anything. You can still choose not to fade or crack uh, a theme. So if you do, you say, okay, I'm going to uh, mark fade on on this mythos theme because I'm, i got to take care of my brother which is part of my logos theme or whatever. I got to have family matters I have to take care of. So I'm going to step away from the investigation to go deal with this. And I'm going to mark fade on my mythos theme. Or 
are hot and heavy. We can't let these guys, you know, get away with this, whatever. Where It's been a murder. We've got to figure out who did it. And my job is calling me wondering why I didn't show up today. So I'm going to mark crack on my Logos theme because I'm just ignoring the call. I'll have to figure out what to do with my boss later. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and so that's how you fade or crack out those, those themes. And then they become mythos themes. Now, the danger here is if you have all four of one theme, that's a massive change. That's a big deal. Uh, if you get all four mythos themes, then you become what's called an avatar. This is a godlike power, uh, but you eventually burn out. Right. Uh, or, or you walk off into the mist and uh, you become an NPC. Okay. So it's almost equivalent to, you know, your character maxing out his levels. He's now at level 20. We don't want to play anymore. You're, you, you just became a god. Have a good day. We'll add you to the Pantheon. <laughs> right? Moving on. Yeah. Right? Start a new character. So we could do that. Or if you get all four Logos themes, you lose all of your mythic powers and you fall asleep again. Now, there are some things that happen to a PC when either of those happens. One is you become an avatar and you get to control it. And you have great power until you decide that you're done being an avatar. And then that's when we decide how your character disappears, okay? If you become a sleeper, you may wake up again, but what happens, you become so much of a sleeper that you even suppress everyone else's powers around you. Your, your power of disbelief is so strong <laughs> that, that they can't even do their mythic powers, okay? So there's, there's some things that happen there that are really kind of interesting. So there's a lot of ebb and flow to characters. You may find that you end up down to just one mythos theme, but then you build back up again. And, then, you know, as you crack away logos themes and just so there's a lot of really great storytelling in there. And um, so we were just starting to get into some of that uh, before. And then uh, we had players that had some personal things come up and they decided to leave the game. And so that kind of put that game on hold. So um, we're starting over again. And uh, so Daniel is looking forward to because we're starting again at to the first case. Well, he came in at the second case. And so we're going to start again at the first case um, with you guys. So, um, all right. So, let me look here. I want, I, oh, here's our expo session. All right. So I have, I'm going to pop this out. And we have some steps to our exposition session. And so I'm going to pop this out for you to see. And all players. Uh, so I believe that you now can see I've popped up on your screen steps to the exposition session. So you should be able to see all of that, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, first off, yeah, let's start at uh, the series concept. So this is the way theme books work as well. They ask you a question. There's an icon next to the question, and it asks the question. So uh, it provides uh, answers. You don't necessarily have to choose one of the answers if you have a, you know, a, um, a great other answer. You can certainly use that. You guys are totally in control of how this goes. So. In the expo session, all players play in. So, Daniel, we're going to count on you to speak up a little bit and guide these newbies a little bit on how, uh, what might be fun for them as um, a crew. So, who are you as a crew? So, th th again, the game begins with the assumption that you already know each other and you're already working together for whatever reason. Now, we're going to decide what those reasons are. Okay, so who are you as a crew? Are you like casual detectives? Like it's like a part-time thing. It's a hobby. It's like it's like a book club, but you try to figure out what's going on in the, you know, true crime. You're like true crime buffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> or do you work for somebody? Are you company men? Do you work for an organization? Are you conspiracy busters? Like you know, X Files. You know, amateurs. Um, are you dabblers in the mist? This means that you are more like into occult stuff um and you're you're actually working on trying to understand things at a whole different level uh, and so in doing so you have your powers you're really spending time on that are you survivors of an event together that where your powers came out you you ended up 
revealing powers or discovering them for the first time together, and so you've kind of stuck together based on that. Are you a gang? I don't know what that is. It could be anything. It could be, you know, you're just... You know, you, you, you're, you've you come together because you run the neighborhood or whatever. I don't know. Um, and are you investigative masked vigilantes? Um, not that masks matter a whole lot, except maybe to other riffs who really pay attention to you. But people don't seem to pay attention. They, they will think you're weird if you're walking around with a mask. Um, are you modern gods? Are you the rift of Thor and, you know, Hercules or whatever, right? Um, or are you part of a secret society and order? Or are you professionals? Are you like rifts for hire where people who know who you are know who you are and they come to you and they say, I want to hire you to do something. All right, what do you guys think? What sounds fun to you? I just, I, I know I'm the new guy here, but I'm, because we're all getting to know each other and we're starting at, at basically the, you know, the first thing, there's a few of those on that list that just don't seem, you know, for a new group, like professional riff for hire. Well, that, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. Right. But uh, conspiracy buster, you know, like, like, uh, the first thing I thought of there was the lone gunman. Exactly. Uh, like X-Files. The X-Files yep. spinoff, yeah. Yep. And I think something like that makes the most sense. I mean, because, you know, I, all things being equal, I mean, really only two of us actually know each other. The rest of us are kind of getting to know each other. So kind of cobbling things together like that. That that seems yep. logical to me. Um, there is Jessica else Hyde. Wanna... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We got to find a, we got to solve those mysteries, and then, and you, you get that gives you a lot of room for a very eclectic, you know, group of people. You know, um, I, it also. Go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. I was gonna say I like that. I like the conspiracy busters or the survivors of an event. Like either we're thrown together by whatever cruel fate has thrown at thrown at us, or uh, you know. Or we've come together because we have a like mind for the conspiracy. I kind of like, yeah. kind of like that. But uh, Daniel, what do you think? Well, um, after playing a bit, I'm gonna say that like um, the city can feel a little bit overwhelming, and actually for new players, maybe a bit of structure might be helpful. So I think company men might be an easier. Um, way to to learn the game because it implies a bit of structure and maybe a bit of a bit more direction um okay other than that it says that we have to be company men for a long time right like we could be right. first day on the job right oh yeah definitely yeah. Uh, and anyway about um um our bonds but but by the end of character creation crew creation we will have um a lot of things connecting us so we will like the characters will know each other pretty well might have known each other for a long time so um that shouldn't really be a problem um and yeah we could be rookies um in in this like we could be complement and rookies at the same time right but we get a bit more it would help us maybe get more, get a bit more background uh, for everything we do. Give us a bit more okay. direction. The description from the book on company men says, a fishy insurance claim in the suburbs, a medical case that just doesn't make sense, a tax audit where the numbers don't add up. It's your department's job to investigate these cases for your company and bring the right truth to life. You're the best at what you do, probably because you can see things other people can't. It's no wonder, then, that the uh, strange cases just seem to pile up on your desk. You grab your blazer and handbag, or handbag, keys to the company car, and head over to check out the scene. Nobody has to know if you're asking a few extra questions, personal questions. You help the company, and the company is only looking for results. That is, until they tell you to drop a case that you have a special interest in. The uh -huh. series' focus is an all-powerful organization. Characters are white-collar professionals, resourceful secretaries, undercover agents, 
terminated employees, failed experiments, and rejects. Possible mm -hmm. cases might be to obtain evidence without the company's knowledge, going back to cold cases to find a lead, identifying and recruiting allies within or outside the organization, exposing deep-rooted mythos involvement in the company. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's a really good starting place, actually. I think one could lead to the other, <clears throat> or... You know, you start having conflict within the company and, uh, you know, later on down the road, hey, maybe it's time to, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, let's, let's be honest. We're going back to the X-Files, you know, Fulton Mulder's a company man. He works for the FBI, yep. but he's not exactly beloved within that company. <laughs> right. you so know, here's that. what Conspiracy Busters reads as, it's an ugly lifestyle, but if you can stomach living in the back of a van, sipping cold coffee and chewing on dry donuts, you're more than likely to catch sight of some strange things happening in the city. Things the media will never report. There seems to be a connection between the world behind the mist and high-ranking government officials, filthy rich tycoons, and power-hungry oligarchs. You're just sitting there with your camera under the bridge, on the docks, at the parking garage, at night, waiting to snap that shot, which will prove it all. Maybe you're crazy, but your heart tells you that the truth is out there. Watch out for yourself, and don't be naive. The people, you, the people you're after certainly aren't naive. They will do whatever it takes to cover up their involvement. If you try to blow the lid, you'd better be prepared for some, for some serious heat. Serious focus is government-level conspiracies. Characters are journalists, tech experts, alien believers, inadvertently involved down-to-earth city residents, etc. Okay? Cool. So there's a lot of good choices. You can angle this campaign however you like, even though this is a published campaign. Um, it's flexible enough to fit pretty much whatever it is that you'd like to make it fit. Cool. Okay. And then it's, it's the next one, what is the city of mist like? Um, me personally, I don't really have any uh, hardcore pre All of those seem really fun and interesting to me. If, if I don't know if anybody else has a has a preference on that. Um, I don't know about that. Um, Jim, could you pop up the page again because I hit escape yeah. and then I lost yep, it. Yep. Okay. Ah, oh, there you. Go. So, question two: What is your city of mist like? True noir, like like fifties noir, neon noir, eighties noir, or modern day noir? Generic comic book city, existing city tapestry of realities or mystical mist to realistic mist what's a realistic mist yeah <laughs> yeah like all of those like uh, i can just see different variations on a theme in every one of those so i'm not picky about that at all i can roll with any one of those okay so let me give you a little bit more um exposition on that the um the realistic mist in your story the mist is not a mystical force but a social phenomenon there is no metaphysical juju preventing people from seeing the truth they just don't want to see it clearly <laughs> sleepers sleepers know that they are living legends in the that there are living legends in the city but they refuse to acknowledge it or discuss it sometimes even at the price of their lives have they been brainwashed or are they just afraid? Is it a form of McCarthyism enacted by the authorities or a widespread psychological response to the unknown? Either way, this conspiracy of silence has the same manifestation as the mystical mist, except it's just in people's heads. I like it. I like it. Yeah. The tapestry of realities, as your story is said in a city... Uh, in a city that isn't really a single well-defined place, but a patchwork of cities from different places and different times, all bent and molded together into an amalgamation metropolis that epitomizes cities, the city of cities. Sleepers, of course, have no reason to suspect 
this makeup and even Riffs may be completely accepting of this meta city, assuming they have always lived here. Perhaps the reason for this is that the mist connects all cities like the all pervasive ether. This option allows you to use elements from different cities in your story without worrying about con consistency. That is probably my favorite. Yeah, I, I think this maybe kind of an amalgamation of those two would just be so much fun because you can just do mm -hmm. anything with that, you know. Oh, we've got to go to, you know, little Vietnam to meet up with somebody to find it. You, know, you can just do whatever you want to do. Like, that just sounds great to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to make notes of that. And all right, good. So the next step of the expo session is character creation. So now you get to begin to make your characters. So um, there are, you can go anywhere with this now. Um, the most interesting kinds of characters tend to be, I think, and kind of what the game leans on a little bit is um, characters that have some interesting dichotomy to them. Okay, so like Hercules, but it's a female character who is um, maybe a, a a yoga trainer right, or something like that, right, but is the Rift of Hercules. So Rift, by the way, is that the, the term that describes breaking through, right? So you right. are the crack in reality that your legend is manifesting itself. So that's why we call them Rifts, because you are the, the little crack that lets them get through, right? And that's why your powers manifest is because that's breaking through. So we refer to your mythos as almost having a mind of its own, but really it doesn't. It doesn't have to be a separate character, a separate personality. It is still you. It's just the story is imbuing in you, and that's how it's getting through, right? Yeah. So I don't mean it to have, like, an intelligence. Um, though one character liked to play it that way. Like, he was playing the Monkey King, and <laughs> so, so it was like he would take over. The Monkey King would be like, oh, my turn. And he would kind of almost transform into the, he'd get hairier and stuff like that and become the monkey king. <clears throat> okay. So um, you don't have to have it like that at all. But the steps of building a character are one, think of a concept. Two, choose four themes and then use those theme books to choose theme components. All right. So we're going to go over, I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to stream in Discord so I can share my screen. Okay. And then you can see uh, the basics of just real quick, the mechanical part of doing a share screen. Do that one, go live. All right, so you can see my screen now and I'm going to pull up the, everyone see it okay? Mm, you have to accept watch stream, but yes, I see it now. Oh, hold on. Got it. Come on. Okay. All right. So, seem to be having some issues here. Note, note to self: I cannot. Have... We lose him. Can you hear me? I uh, no. You can't hear Daniel, me. Are you there? See... All right. Hold on. I think it's just me and you. 
Wait, something just happened. All oh, right, I am. I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, but yeah, I can hear all of you. All right, all right. can you hear me? I think we just lost Jim. All right. No, Hold Jim on. is here. Yeah, I still Only see I him hear. in there. The I see the. Uh... Daniel, you can, can hear, hear me. You. Oh, okay. Yep. So Daniel can hear me, but not the other two. All right. That's weird. Yeah, I that can't is. Hear Discord splits like that. All right. Well, you they can hear you though. Will you tell them to? Yeah, I don't hang hear up Jim and, either. And dial I can back hear in. you and Richard. I don't hear Jim. Um, I, I see him in the in the Discord can you, server. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hear you. Hear Daniel. Uh, so yep. Uh, so uh, hang up and just uh, connect again. Ah, I got it. Okay. There. John, there can you go. hear me? Yep, 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 yep. All right. I got you now. So it, I'm sure I caused it, uh, but Discord <laughs> doesn't handle it very well when that well, happens. We're still missing one. Yeah. It will be there a minute. He'll, he'll come right back. He should. It's your promise. So <laughs> I have a problem with promise my me. computer when I have my webcam on and I try to do one thing too many. Then it yeah, locks up that. my whole Discord. Everything else works fine, but Discord locks up. So uh, I wasn't even surprised this time around. <laughs> I, <was> like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Jim locks out, and then he's got to. <laughs> I have to go in the task manager. Second and so freeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, where is so it? We don't, there we is. don't have any concepts. Like What's character hard, concepts no? at all. That was me sharing the screen. You don't oh, have any idea. I, I actually have an idea because <laughs> I'll, I'll give you some, some, I guess, bad news, but then good news. The bad news is because it's, I'm one of those people when, when there's a, you know, oh, you can do anything you want. Then I tend to get decision fatigue and I'm like, oh, I can't, it's, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. So I started looking a lot of the pre-made ones just to get ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and generally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of pre-made characters because they never really line up with what I like. But I did find one character in, in one of the pre-mades that you had put, I think, in the VTT. There was a character named Declan Lestrange. Yeah. And that just kind of – because when I was originally reading the book and I was understanding, you know, the um, – you know, you got four um, – you know, kind of, uh, you know, one is your rift and the other three are, or, or, you know, two can be a rift and two can be mm -hmm. your, logos, your regular right. identity. Yeah, your logos and all this stuff. And I kind of thought, well, the way the game goes, I, th I really think I want to start out with one mm -hmm. uh, mythos and three logos. And I, and I did want to do that dichotomy where the logos strongly contrasted with the, the mythos. And I really like the way... Declan, a strange character, is set up because he can go in a lot of different directions. And his mythos is not, you know, oh, I've got a Thor mythos. I've got a, you know, it's this very amorphous, living in a dream kind of a thing. And it could, and I even thought of like playing it where he's got this stuff and he's aware of it, but he, but it's not really what he, you know, he's kind of this guy who likes to be, you know, maybe grounded or a real man's man. And then here's this. Mm -hmm dream you know like like his waking life is very left brain and then this right brain thing comes in and and he's got to struggle with that and i really of all the the pre-made characters i've read i'm like that one seems fun mm -hmm. so i thought to make things simple um and, you know if anybody else wants to go with their own idea but just for this first game and to see how things go i'm gonna lean i mean i may modify him a little bit to put my own spin on it but I kind of want to stick with that idea because I like that. Cool. Okay. Um, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, you yeah. can go with whatever you want. And we'll, we'll make all the characters fit together. Steven, you're not finding a direction already? Daniel. Daniel, <laughs> gosh dang it. Okay, I'm going to change your... I'm good. Yeah, just change <laughs> Changing your Discord name. Screw it. <laughs> uh, uh, while, while you guys talk, I'm going to mute mine for one minute. I, I uh, do something really quick. I'll be right yep. back in two minutes. Okay. okay. So, question: Where are the premades actually? I can find them in the VDD. Um. Uh, 
was I don't kind think... of thinking of leaning a bit further in into Slavic mythos. <laughs> Mythi, mythos. You're welcome to. Uh, I'm I was wondering if there's one for Baba Yaga at this point in the pre-mates because it's very... Oh, yeah, it's that's a pretty common... I, yeah. I hear she has a hut, too. She does, and I, I'm just, just wondering if the hut has a theme book. Um, that could be an enclave, right? Or a some kind of a vehicle. Or a companion. Yeah. So yeah, go for uh, it. Whatever you want. I there. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, someone has made one in the Discord, but I don't like it when other people make them. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, I usually. But I don't know. I don't know if I'll go in that direction. I, <clears> I might go something a bit more. I don't know. Esoteric. Oh, or he high concepty. He, he quit the Discord altogether. Ooh. Ooh. He went too far. Oh, he's back. Oh, you're looking for no Richard? No, he's right. Yeah. I can see him on mine. Yeah, okay, he's there. No, but I just saw he rejoined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so he must have dropped all the way out of the Discord, like, and then rejoined. Okay, yeah. uh, we just meant hang up the call, like leave the voice channel and go back in the voice channel. Sorry. All right, every everybody here. Who's someone had to step away. I'm, yeah, I'm back. I had to, okay. and I'm back. Okay. All right, Richard. I'm going to change your name to so I am clear who you are. All right. All right, so Richard, can you hear? Yes. All uh, right. You're just really quiet, so that's fine. All right. <laughs> um, all right, so you can see on my, on my share, I'm now sharing my screen. Uh, when you have a blank character like this, this is my Sam Paul character. Um, there is a lock icon at the top right. This is normally engaged, so you don't make changes to your character by accident. But you would unlock it, and it unlocks all kinds of stuff, okay? Ooh. You know, those new things show up, like add themes and so forth. So you um, can give your character a name, and then if you choose to rename Mythos and Logos, this would be your Mythos name and your Logos name. Or rather, not your name, but what is the mythos and what is your logos? So this might be, you know, uh, Paul Bunyan, construction worker. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then your short description, put whatever you want in there. That's uh, yours to use. You won't use any of these other tabs except the bio tab until later in the game. We will. We don't really use the clues tab. It's the one mechanic on this VTT that I don't think works well. Um, I found that it just kind of stopped the game when we start keeping track of clues. This is the result of an investigation move. You get clues, and they're like a commodity you can spend. So you spend a clue by asking a specific question, then I have to answer you um, with at least a truthful answer or a strong lead. Or if it was a, a mixed success, I can, get, I can make it a half-truth or an ambiguous answer, right? Um, so, and then moments of evolution is part of that um, ev evolution of your character. As themes come and go, you end up with moments of evolution. And they are things that are like character, overall character improvements that work no matter what themes you have in play or whatever, okay? Uh, we won't talk, we won't get to that for a while. Um, juice, help, and hurt, we use those all the time, but not until we actually start playing the game. Juice is what you, it's the, it's the uh, Play-Doh that you use to create story tags. So if you use a change the game move, that allows you to decide like, oh, I need to go, I need to uh, trick these people in this restaurant to think that I'm the IT guy. So I'm gonna go back out to the van and I'm gonna go scrummaging around for some IT, I wanted to change the game. And I'm gonna look like I'm an IT guy. Okay, all right, so you find some broken glasses and you get a pocket protector, da da da, da. And that, the juice, are the tags that you're going to create that will now define you as an IT guy, and you'll use those tags to do your uh, sneak around or convince. Uh, so those are other moves you'll end up uh, maybe being able to use those tags on. So that's what uh, Juice is for, is to create tags. 
um, help and hurt happen every session. Um, we have an end of credits uh, move that we make where we geek out during the credits. And when we do that, you get to decide if you had a particularly interesting interaction with another player and will it give you help or hurt. And that's just juice that's waiting for you to spend on them. So that's what help or hurt does. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, you will see that there's, uh, if you pull down the core moves section, you've got regular moves, special moves, and then a stop holding back. Stop holding back is a pretty big deal. That is there to when there's a really dramatic moment and you are absolutely going to do something brand new that you that your character has never tried before. That's a stop holding back and it has potentially dire consequences or amazing reward. So it would be one of those critical moment kind of uh, moves. Otherwise, under your core moves, these are all of the ones right out of the book. These are the normal moves that you would make during a normal session. Um, Change the game again is, again, to create story tags uh, or a, a status. A convince is, again, um, convince would be you're going to apply a status to a target unless they do what you say. Okay? Um, so it could be I'm holding a gun to his head and I'm telling him to hand me his wallet. And if he doesn't do it, then the, the consequence would be gunshot wound three or something like that, right? Depending on how well you roll your convince. Uh, face danger is I'm going to do harm to you, but I'm giving you a chance to mitigate that. That's what face danger is. Go toe to toe is a, a direct competition. So it could be grappling, could be hand to hand combat. It could be a race to get someplace before the other person does. It could be a car chase. All that's go toe to toe. Hit with all you've got is you've got a clear shot. Uh, typically with some kind of a ranged weapon, you're not hand to hand where they can do harm back to you. And hit with all you've got is I'm going to use my ice blast and I'm going to hit you because no one's in the way. You're right there. I got you. And that hit with all you've got is better than go to toe, go toe to toe because it doesn't have a checkbox that says I'm going to avoid me being hurt. Investigate is how you ask questions of the, of the game master. It's, a, it's kind of a meta uh, move, uh, but it gives you direct knowledge. Your answers could be uh, okay, I'm going to investigate the crime scene. What do I find? Okay, um, you investigate the crime scene. Ask me some questions. All right, so um, what happened here? Or you want, to, you want to not ask yes or no. Ask open-ended questions, not yes or no, so that it gives me a chance to um, embellish or give you things that maybe you didn't even think about. But um, like, who, who committed this murder? That's a really good question. I may not tell you directly, but I may give you a solid lead. And uh, like it may, this, this evidence shows you that it was someone who had claws. Something that had claws killed this, whatever, okay? That's what, so investigate is used for all that. Um, and then there's a sneak around. That is to trick or fool someone or to do something unnoticed. And then take the risk is I'm going to do something dangerous. It could potentially do harm to me. Um, like I'm going to jump a barbed wire fence, for example. So let's take the risk. Or I'm going to run out, run across this busy street. Okay, that sort of thing. Make sense? Yep. Yes. yes. Special moves. Downtime happens in between action scenes or whatever scenes. You can take a downtime. And you players just go, oh, I think we need some downtime. And then that, when you execute that move, it gives you some options of things you can do. One is keep working the case so you get three more clues. Or one is I'm going to work on my logos theme. I got to go back and deal with my boss. Um, uh, foreshadowing is actually something you can use in the middle of uh, um, some kind of conflict where it's a good thing that three hours ago I did this to prepare for just such an eventuality as this moment. <laughs> That's what foreshadowing does. It lets you go back in time and and uh, fix something. And then opening monologue and session end, we give, if you do an opening monologue where you're kind of summarizing last session and leading into this session, um, we there's a reward for that. You get attention to one of your themes. And the session end just helps us w walk through what we're gonna do at the end. So those, that's it, those are all the moves. Everything pretty much fits into those categories. 
All right, so what you would do with your character sheet unlocked, you can fill out the top part and then click add theme and you're given all of the different themes to choose from. Um, and so you would pick and choose whatever theme it is based on all the theme books. So this is where I, I can try to help you a little bit when you have an idea of what kind of stuff that you want your character to be able to do. But otherwise, I think it's gonna take you reading the, oh, hold on. I do have a summary. Uh, it's in the Discord. I summarized all of the little tags um, that kind of describe. Uh, the thieves have some weird noise. Um, so I've, I've got some weird, let's see, where is that? Is that in um, characters and rules in the Discord? So let me go up, up, up. There it is. Okay, I'm going to, I don't think this is pinned. So I'm going to put it in the pinned messages. It's just an image because I did it in OneNote and OneNote pastes into here as an image. But it looks like, <clears throat> like this. Let me open, if you open in browser, it'll become full size. And then you can do your little zoom in. Okay, so these are, you can still see this screen okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so these are the different themes, and then this kind of gives you an idea of what that theme is about. And then the process of filling in the theme is pretty straightforward. What you do is <clears throat> move Discord out of the way. So what you do, I'm just going to pick an adaptation theme because it's at the top. Then what you do is you need to open up the rules or the theme book that's in the, in the uh, area over here. So you open this up and we go to adaptation and we load. All right, so this loads. Um, you can resize this window here or you can pop it. Oh, this doesn't have pop out. I thought I had pop out. I guess I need to load that so we can pop these out. But this then is actually the pages for this theme book from the rules. And so what you do is as you read through this, it gives you a really good idea. You can zone in on this. And then, um, <clears throat> so you ask yourself the questions. And then when it comes to power tag questions, so how does your mythos adapt to the circumstances? And then this will help you name your mythos and all that kind of stuff. And then, <clears throat> so if you're looking at Declan Lestrange, for example, you may find, it'll say at the very top of the theme, mm -hmm. switch to these four columns, right? At the very top, it'll say the name of the theme. So it may be... Uh, what does it say? Do you know what the... Uh, living in a dream? Yeah, and so above that, in the title bar... Oh, adaptation. adaptation. All right, so that is this that is this very theme book. Ah, uh, okay? yeah, I got it. All right, so you can look at... You don't have, see any questions there, but what you do in this book is um, you take this character sheet, and when you add a power tag... So first off, you can see this adaptation at the top, and you can name your theme which would be just like Declan's Estranged, like living in a dream, right? And then you come down, we save the mystery for last, I think. It's pretty close to the end. But then you start doing power tags. And when you click a power tag, you choose which letter of the question you're answering. And it says, oh, look at page 83 to 85. Well, that's this. So here's 83. Oh. And so you look through A, B, C, and you decide what answer. And then it gives even s sample answers. You could choose those if you want or make up your own sample answer. Um, so what narrow group of effects within your mythos's domain have you mastered? Or what specific class of things uh, or beings can you produce or summon? So the, uh, I made a guy that was the gremlin. He was just the, the rift of, of the gremlin. And so he could summon other gremlins and he just brought other gremlins out and caused havoc everywhere he went right <laughs> I, was having, I was having so much fun with that game and then the game master just petered out on it i guess i was i was too hard on him um <laughs> but uh yeah i i caused all kinds of trouble um so anyway the um the and, and by the way there is very little out there about what gremlins are or what they can do aside from the 80s movie <laughs> Uh, seriously, like, um, Rold, what's his name? Dahl, who also yeah. did BFG. He did a, a book called The Gremlins as well. He was a 
a World War II pilot, and or in the RAF, he wasn't maybe a pilot, but uh, he would always hear all the stories about all the things that went wrong with the planes, and that they blamed it on gremlins, and so he wrote a book about it. But there's nothing else in legend, or there's hardly anything anywhere about what gremlins are. Go figure. So I, I, that gave me a lot of opportunity to make crap up from scratch. So it was fun. And I don't think the Game Master was ready for me. Um, so that's what you do. And then uh, when you add a tag, you pick the question. Okay, we're going to answer question number one, and we're going to hit confirm. And then, then it gives you this thing to fill out. So now you name the tag. This would be the exact answer to the question. This is my answer. And then we don't choose crispy or broad unless it really is a broad tag. And broad tags are, uh, you're allowed one broad tag um, until you reach a certain evolution. And then um, that, may, that may lead to um, you having two broad tags. But broad tags can be applied to many, many, many different kinds of moves. Um, the way you come up with good tag names is something that um, gives you an opportunity to not be too flexible, but flexible enough that it, it's not just a, always this one, I have to do this one thing uh, in order to invoke this tag, right? Make it a little bit more flexible, but you don't have to make it so that, um, but, but if you make it so it can be used anywhere, like shape shifting. That's a broad tag, right? Because it doesn't even describe what you can shape shift into. It's just like I can change my shape. Okay. So what then? What a broad tag gets used for is pretty much just in a change the game to create new tags of that describe what you've changed into. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's kind of so avoid tags that are too broad, and then you don't have to fill in. Any of this other stuff, these are just really good. Uh, I, I think they're really good prompts. They're not even part of the game. Whoever wrote this module put these in here as just a, a way to think about it. I mean, the theme books kind of invite you to do this in your head while you're doing things, but, but they were actually put places for you to fill in if that helps you to define what this tag is to you. And then when you're done, you just hit close and it's here inside your your uh, theme. And then when you want to do a move, so we're going to do a core move, and we're going to do um, we're going to do like a go toe to toe. And all you do then is click on answer. Whoops, we're in unlocked. When it's locked, moves work. All right. So we're going to. You can either click on these first, and you can see how it marked it yellow, and then hit execute move. In which case, then you can see that it puts your tag in here that you have chosen. If I unselect it, it'll take it out. See, um, I'm having trouble moving stuff, there we go. Um, so if I click it or not, am I locked up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, because it was just, the things are acting a little weird. But anyway, um, so, and then as a game, oh, this is popping up because I'm the game master too. And so as a game master, I can choose to allow, I'll prove it, or I can decline it. And so um, this is to just prevent tag spamming. Like I'm going to just click, 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 and then I'll, you know. So I now have plus eight to my roll, that kind of thing. It's there to prevent that. All right. And then um, that's pretty much it. That's That's how you make your characters. So now it's time to start doing that. And... So let's go in in kind of rounds and let's find out what you're going to pick for your first theme. So let's take some time. Go ahead and take some time right now to look through the different theme books and find one that matches um, the gist of what you're getting at. So that summary is very helpful for me when I was making characters because I was doing it as kind of an example to the initial players uh, that I started with. I'm like, okay, so let's make a character. Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, it would be really handy if I had all the kind of the theme book summaries in one spot so I could figure out what theme book I want to like use. And then I can open up the theme book and get specific with the questions and so on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hang back while you guys mess around. Are there any questions that you have? 
I, I take don't have your, I'm fine. I take your silence as assent. So then go ahead. I will be right here. Ask questions. Just pipe up. Ask. Talk amongst yourselves of what you think. One thing that would be really boring is for everyone to choose all the same things. <laughs> uh, so what is what is crispy tag? Okay, crispy tag. Uh, it becomes unavailable. It kind of burns out when you use it. So normally when you use juice to create a tag, they're crispy. All theme, okay. when, we, when we get to making our theme, which comes next after your characters, uh, all the theme tags are crispy. And that just means that okay. uh, they burn out with every single use. So you can't use them again until they get reset. And so that happens at the end of the adventure or whatever. Okay, there we go. Lock. So I think we need um like do both have ideas for whatever you're gonna play? I have no an idea. Does. Yeah. So I'm Oren Murphy is an ex-military operative who's now trying to adjust to his civilian world. Uh, he's gotten in jobs as an insurance investigator, uh, and he is currently the rift for Achilles. So uh, I'm thinking he's going to have Bastion yeah. and Expression. Um, expression? Yes, because he's going to be an unparalleled warrior. So mm -hmm. he's going to... Uh, so that is going to be his... Fighting skills. Um, Let me be clear, by the way, that you just because you have a theme like expression or bastion doesn't mean another player couldn't take them. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, don't all be variations on a theme. Um, yeah. Because be Achilles and Hercules and because an expression. Well, you could even be in the same pantheon and all be gods if you want. I, it's fine by me. But even the gods aren't the same, right? Right. So uh, Athena is very different from Zeus and so on. So um, I'm just saying um, you can have duplicates of the same thing. Don't lock, don't, don't like, oh, he's got expression, so I can't have expression now, dang it. Uh -huh. No, you can have expression because it's going to be totally different. But yeah. if all three of you have expression, uh, and, you know, it may be hard for that to stand out as a cool thing when you're doing something with your theme. Maybe. It'll just make it more difficult, I think. So, but don't feel like just because someone else took a theme you were thinking about that you can't take it. That's my, that's my only point. I'm stepping back. Go ahead. Um, but uh, for his uh, Logos themes, he's going to be, uh, part of it's going to be the mission, right? He's trying to figure out, uh, you know, the, the his mythos's mystery is going to become his mission because he's a mission oriented person from his military training he needs uh, a mission to feel like he's being productive um so that is going to be uh kind of his shtick he's going to try to figure out what this mythos wants to know um because that's what he can, it's the only thing he can control in this messed up civilian world where he has to follow all these new rules. And uh, <laughs> his possessions are going to be the other part of his Logos theme. He basically is going to have a uh, a work van. And unlike most people's work vans where it's uh, full of tools and things of that nature, it's full of all the goodies he kept uh, that the military did not take back from his uh, his operative days. So... How are we doing so far? Good. Good. All right. Yeah, I like it. That's where I'm at. I have no idea. I was very <laughs> sure that I had at least one more week to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then two guys signed up all at once. What happened? <laughs> Seven to my life. Um, well, let me give I'm you gonna... a little bit more time to think, Daniel, because like I said, I'm leaning very hard towards this 
pre-main character, Declan Lestrange. Because I like him because he's kind of like uh, the dark side of Indiana Jones. Mm. You know, his, his occupation is dubious antiques dealer. So, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, you know, Indiana Jones was, if you go back and watch those movies, you know, he's always got this line of, it belongs in a museum, you know, and. But it never and gets then, to that museum, does it? Well, a, it never gets to that museum. And then B, let's be honest, okay? Museums aren't the font of, like, morality. Okay? <laughs> the British Museum has a lot of stolen goods that should be in other museums. So, you know, we, we could argue about that all day long. But the the thing I like about this character is the whole living in a dream thing it's like the mythos is, is coming through him. He knows something is strange, but he doesn't know exactly what it is. And he's, because he's an antique dealer, he's into ancient objects and the occult and things like this. So, you know, it's not something he'll talk about openly at parties because he doesn't want people, you know, like, hey, I'm grounded in science and reality and I'm a wheeler dealer and I'm a businessman and I buy and sell, you know, goods to people. And, uh, and I go to tough places and deal with tough men, but he also has this, this living in a dream, this adaptation thing that that's come through him. So it's kind of like his, uh, his shadow self, but I, 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 you know, the, the person you would meet on a daily basis would be kind of like one of Indiana Jones nemesis, but not so bloodthirsty. He's not going to hang out with Nazis. That's for sure. <laughs> but but he's not squeaky clean. He's not exactly on the moral high ground per se, you know. So uh, I always like to play characters. Um, that I like to describe as well dressed scum, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so um, right. So By the way, right. okay. um, let me interject again real quick. Um, I didn't really know. I, I've seen Declan the Strange, and he gets used a lot in, in examples and stuff. But um, yeah. it says here he is a <clears throat> antique dealer who is living a dr living in a dream influenced by the mythos of Morpheus, the Greek god of sleep. Oh. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I haven't dug into that character a whole lot. I've looked at it. The character sheet. I have it. I, I have the printed out one too. Their poster size. They're really cool. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I've got um, the PDF of that open right now. That's what I'm. That's because I was looking at some of those I found on yeah. on your uh, Discord server. You know, you had some PDFs listed, and I was like, one was Excalibur, and yes, correct. There was a yeah. There was a Japanese one, uh, Kitsune, which was really cool. But mm -hmm. Kitsune was the opposite of what I want to do. Kitsune was three mythos and one logos and i'm like uh -huh. no, i kind of want to go the other way i want to start with one mythos three logos yeah. and then move through the mythos thing and so know, kid and... kitsune is is one who i have to go be a kid at school just so i can dip one toe in reality yeah exactly and i was like <laughs> i don't want to start my first right I just thought that would be too much i want to start grounded with like one foot in in the mist and so the more I, I read in the books and the more I, yes. I, I looked around everything, I'm like, that's really where I want to go. And then I found Declan Lestrange and I'm, and I'm, that was kind of my model. And I've been like trying to come up with some other things. And every time I just keep coming back to him, I'm like, well, I think that's really what I want to do for this first time. I didn't want to be cheese ball and be like, I'm a hard boiled detective. I'm like, that's, that's too right. on the nose. Right. You know, so I, 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 yeah. as, as a pointer, uh, I find that using chat GPT or even the Bing, um, little chat, um, uh, yeah. AI, uh, is fantastic for bouncing off. I, or say, Hey, give me an idea. Help me brainstorm. And, and, yeah. uh, they usually come up with some really good stuff. I would like a character that, you know, give me some legends that have to do with lightning or whatever. And, and yeah. they will come up with, uh, list out characters for you. And they're like, okay, I want to dig into that. Sounds fun. So I'll be digging into chat GPT as soon as we're done, because uh, I'm, I'm a teacher and I use it to help me write lesson plans. <laughs> I'm serious. It, it's it, I, I don't follow those lesson plan to a T, but it always gives me a great idea. And then I, I improv from there. Exactly. Yep. I find that great for character. It is. It's a well. great tool. It's a great tool. Yep. It doesn't it, it, it never gives you exactly what you want, but it gives you a lot to, to start hold on to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So you may want to try that, Daniel. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually zeroing in on something. Okay, good. Hey, cool. Like, um, as I've already played a one um, Mythos character and two Mythos character. So I think I might be going all in. All right. With a three Mythos character. Right. And I was thinking of something. By, by the way, yeah. while you are t talking about that, just for the new players, it doesn't change your power level to have three Mythos characters. It just changed the nature of what you can do. Uh, you could have, like, a, be a janitor with a mop and as, have three logos and one barely usable Mythos theme and still hold your own in a fight against, you know... Olympian thugs. It, the game is very cool that way. These guys went up against none of in the last session we played. They they fought a giant spider. Um, and while they some of them had you know three mythos and some had three logos, um, and none of them were particularly combat oriented characters. They they did just fine. <laughs> they, were, they, they got creative just, and. You know, so I think that's one of the things that I was really looking forward to in this game is is I mean, it's not that you can't be creative in in D and D. You right. you have to be creative, um, but sometimes you have to be creative with the rules. You know, I've got this feat and I've got this bonus action, and right. whereas you know this game seems more like you just have to be more creative and come up with an idea and then justify it and then execute it. Exactly right. And unlike Champions as well. So, you know, Champions is very point balanced. And if you're off by 20 points, that makes a big difference in the game. You know, if a villain yeah. comes in who's at this point level and you got to have this many characters at that point level, otherwise it's not going to be a balance. So the, and Champions Game Masters are struggling over how do I keep this combat from just being completely unbalanced? We don't worry about that here. We just do whatever. It's all good. Deal. So. So what nice. do you think of Daniel? Your, Sorry, your three Daniel. logo, three uh, three mythos. Yep, I want to rule a court of fairies. Ooh. Oh, yes. I just need to find uh, the right logos for that. No, it's not going to be a kid. No. <laughs> Probably going to be a lawyer. No. Well, maybe. No more doctors. All right, let me close that. He played a child psychologist last game. And then, of course, <laughs> one of the other riffs. It was a psychologist who had a child for a friend. Yeah, who was the lost boy. He was the rift of the lost boy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good idea. Um, and I looked back and I uh, apparently played a, like a surgeon who was also a rift of Baron Samidi. So I should start playing doctors. Doctors. <laughs> I did have one taxi driver. Richard, how are you coming along? Mm, I'm just trying to get the hang of the way this character sheet is laid out. So, um, I mean, I've got my mysteries for my themes. Uh, just trying to figure out uh, the way the tag tags actually work on these themes on these character sheets. Okay, so you need three power tags and one weakness tag. Okay, so three power tags per yeah. theme. Correct. Okay. Three power tags and then... And, and, and this is already kind of programmed to not let you do more than that. You can take an extra one, and that's what the little star icon is for. That's your extra power <sighs> tag. Uh, but then you have to take an extra weakness. So the anchor is the weakness tag. So when you're ready to put a weakness tag, you'd use the anchor. 
And then the otherwise the lightning bolt is your power tag. The star is a bonus tag, which you can choose to do, but then you'll take an extra weakness tag. Um, and you don't have any improvements yet. That comes when you um, improve your theme. So after three attention, you can take an improvement or add a new tag. There are choices what you can do with your theme improvements. And those are in the theme book. They're later after the main questions of the theme book. Um, the improvements come there. Okay. All right. I think uh, King of Fairies is a no-go. Basically, oh. same powers as um, as the dragon. <laughs> Wings, shape-shifting, I don't know. <laughs> Although there's uh, a lot of other stuff as well. He played Zmaj, a Serbian dragon. Think of it. I, 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 uh, I did some research on it because I have no idea what Serbian dragons are like. And so I, I uh, dug in a little bit and it really comes up like Tiamat or, you know, a big old nasty dragon. But Zmaj is more of a, an ally of humanity a little bit more. But that's an interesting. It was an interesting character. Although a school teacher yeah, was a go. king of the fairy court, could be funny. The Earl King. No. Well, where did my the Wild Hunt? I was thinking about that actually. I'm a bit stunned by the fact that I have. Very little knowledge about the, the wild hunt. I mean, you blocked me on the four horsemen. <laughs> I'm just missing war. <laughs> there we go. I mean, even um, each horseman as a theme could be a lot of fun. But also trying to bring um, about the apocalypse not as much fun <laughs> Makes so game. if i click on the anchor i should theoretically see a little anchor next to no it does the double down arrow the double chevrons. okay all right okay all right make sure i wasn't doing something wrong okay no nope, that's fine that I, the anchor icon, I mean, there's a limited set of icons that can be used in Foundry. So I think they did the best they could. <laughs> An anchor may pull you down. <laughs> a sink to the bottom with an anchor. But uh, yeah, so that's all. That's just, um, and again, every time a weakness tag is invoked, it gives you attention to that theme. So it's almost like I get an experience point every time this happens. So I don't think you ever want to be without your weakness tags. It's an option to remove a weakness tag from an improved theme. It's one of the ways you can improve your theme. But I don't think it really improves your theme. Because it prevents one way for you to get attention. So what I, I guess what I go here and confuse. So if I click on the lightning bolt, yep. it brings up A through J. Right. So you need to look at the I, theme book, and those A through Js refer to those questions that are in the theme book. So you almost always start. I with only. Well, then I guess I'm looking in the wrong book because I only see the weakness tag questions, which are A through D. Okay. Yeah, you're probably looking in the wrong book. So which which theme book are you looking at? Bastion. Bastion. All right. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen again so you can see that in the stream. Doo -doo -doo. We can just be on the same page, literally. 
All right, so I'm looking at the theme book for Bastion, and the first question is the concept of the theme, and then power tags, A through J. And then the next page has weakness tags. So I'm not seeing... It's not showing... Hang on, am I showing, looking at the wrong... It says character creation is all I see. It does it's not showing? Oh, okay. So go um, up to the if you can see where I'm pointing up to the journals, and then go to PDF books. There's a theme books journal in there. So what I'm saying is your screen. Your screen isn't showing me anything. What? Screen is kind of like stuck. There's little. Not uh, doing anything. Oh, I see what you mean. All right, let me turn off my streaming. Stop ringing. That's because I chose the wrong app. That's the one right there. I chose my PDF I had open. There you go, right? Okay. So, my bad. Totally on me. All right, so um, if you go over to uh, the journals tab, and then you go down to PDF books and then click on theme books. It brings up this window. Yep. And then um, clicking on Bastion gives you a, a, a actual thing. that's just got a button in the middle. It says load PDF, right? Ah, uh, okay. I didn't you click that. load PDF. And then it has four pages. So there's page one, gives you kind of some overview. And then question for concept. There we go. Okay, and then cool. power tag questions. Cool, cool, cool. So I put these all on the tabletop so they'd be handy, I hope. I hope that works. But it also includes themes that are from Shadows and Showdown. So you may not be able to access the rule book for that. I did I do have the player's guide in here, but I don't have Shadows and Showdowns. I think we've got the hard copy Shadows and Showdowns here. Oh, you do? Home. I'm almost positive we do. Like yeah, we said, do. We have yeah. we have we have hard copies and PDF copies of everything. Yeah. We've it. Oh, you bought yeah. this game already? Yeah. Yeah, we, we want it because we're hardcore. We want to play it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I I did the Kickstarter where it had the, the last Kickstarter they did where it was like you could get everything. Yeah. Bundle. Yep. So I kickstarted that. So I have nice. everything. That's what I did yeah. too. Because I just got yeah. into this game in January. So. Wow. I'm like, how did I miss this? What what was I doing six years ago? What the heck? I like I didn't realize it was six years old either. Like when Richard found it and we started doing research, we're like, wow, this thing's been around for a while. We had yeah. no idea. And it's like right up my alley as far as yeah, totally, you know, totally things totally I cool like. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to this. You would also like Torg, I'll bet. Yeah, I saw the uh in one of the other um uh, you know, chat lines uh, mm -hmm. related to this. On yeah, because I, I just server. launched. I just launched a game of Torg. It's currently just a teach people how to play, but uh, it's I a game that came think... out in 1990 and then came out again in 2018 or whatever. They re it... a new a new edition. I could be wrong about this, but I think I played Torg once or twice a long time, like in the 90s when it first came. Yeah, out. and it was but my a, memory a... of this is so vague obscenely crunchy too and it's way yeah. better now yeah so yeah. that does i played it for good. a couple of years and then gave up on it but the setting has stuck with me forever I, i've constantly tried to use this figure out how to use this setting in a different system but yep. the system issue has been resolved so we, now we can just play and have fun That's it uses fantastic. cards it's freaking cool Almost any time, that's one thing I've discovered that, you know, because they came out with like spell cards and combat cards for mm -hmm. D&D 5th edition. And I'm like, for me, because I have, you know, kind of an adult ADHD issue and like being able to move things around, like lay out mm -hmm. all my spells and then organize them and reorganize them and not just be looking up and down a piece of paper. Like, right. That yeah, is cool always, that yeah, it's always helpful. So whenever, you know, I look at this and I can move the cards around and do things that way, it just, it helps me tremendously. <clears throat> so, and we, and we use a lot of those techniques when we play, you know, D&D &D and, and level up mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. All it's right. really, really so cool. So not to distract you anymore from 
from other game systems. <laughs> yeah. Understood. I think I've got most of what I'm... Because I'm going to take this Declan Lestrange character. I'm going to modify him a little bit over the next week until we have our next session next Sunday. To I'm going to play around with him just a little bit. But but that's the basic structure I'm looking at. Is that character. Um, it just it just seems more like the real of what I was going to try to do. So... Hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My Discord crashed again. <laughs> My computer is way too powerful for the Discords. <laughs> okay. So one thing that I like to do in this game because transparency plays well is Daniel, I'm going to move your sheet up into the PC folder just so they're all together. Um, is I set the player character sheets to allow um, other players observer level, which means it's kind of like read only. Right. And that way you can look at other people's character sheets and rip off the not rip off, but rip. Yeah, it's just, I keep getting weird background noise. Yep. It's over here. Maybe as well. it's Richard. It's Richard's fault. I'm, I'm going to Richard. <laughs> if anyone, it's probably me. I don't, I, it seems like every time we play some game online, there's always some weird thing with my mic. So let me, let me mute mine and see if that makes All it right. go away. No, it sounds fine. It's Richard. Definitely. So I'm watching Richard. him light up. All right. So I've given everyone observer level on the others. Bastion, expression, possession, and mission. Nice. Declan, you having a hard time getting started? We might have lost John. Or he's just muted and forgot he muted. I just muted. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Are you having trouble? Now, if you want to just use the Declan Lestrange pregen, um, you don't have to worry about A, B, C, D. You can just punch them in and put the answers in. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I Because I don't know what they are. They're not forthcoming. Yeah, I've got them. But... Yeah. I've got it right. I've got the PDF right here. So, yeah. So you could, that's what I did when I ran um, Shark Tank, is I just plugged in the pregens. And I didn't worry about, because we weren't looking at character advancement down the road. So if you want to just, we could figure it out later, um, whenever you want to have time or have a better grasp of the character or what have you. But otherwise, I would just pick a letter. Usually the top one will be the A. Uh, and then the others, I don't know. So, I mean, you could go look at each question and say, which does this phrase seem to answer? Um, and do that if you want, but otherwise you can just plug in those themes, bing, 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 on your character sheet and go for it. So you can just f fill those in. It only takes like 15 minutes. If you don't have to think about it, you're just plugging them in. Um, 
So super easy to do. Daniel, you haven't even got started yet. No. I'll get there. I know. I have faith in you. I mean, I might not finish it today, though. That's just fine. Now that I know, like, this is happening. Ideally, we'd like to, but um, it's okay if we don't, because we're going to do our crew theme still. And then we're going to do... Um, the um, day in the life. And you don't need to have your character fleshed out for that. It's not going to have any combats or anything. Um, there are um, trope examples of themes. So the book is helpful in kind of prepackaging some ideas. So for example, if you want to play a trickster god or goddess, they recommend things like subversion, divination, and adaptation. Or if you want to be a uh, a thief, maybe a relic would be a stolen item that gives you powers. Mobility would be a swiftness. Subversion would be you know your fabled thievery. Uh, then there's logos tropes like you want to be an alcoholic. That would be possession. <laughs> that would be your booze or drugs. Defining event. What made you drink in the first place? And then defining relationships, who hasn't given up on you? Um, so you could do that. So totally do that. So um, homeless hobo, jock, journalist, mobster, gangster, masked vigilante, cult member, doctor. I think we might need to decide on our um, crew thing. Because... So one of... Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. Because other... <clears throat> Otherwise, um, you know, playing the homeless person doesn't work if you're a company man. <laughs> you could be living in the van. No. Down by the river. No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I live in the basement. I just moved in. I've been working for the company all the time. I just live in, like Fox Mulder practically lives down there. That was actually going to be my first thing. My first concept was going to be uh, the know-it-all character, the Mulder, Sherlock Holmes, Batman, guys that just always have the right answer at the right time. Uh, but I went with Achilles because it seemed like it'd be a little easier. Not cool. Okay, so a crew theme on the VTT acts like a separate character that you all then have um, owner access to. And um, it shows up in that fifth spot on your character sheet. So all players are owners. All right, so I have created one called the crew. <clears throat> So you guys can edit that as you discuss how you want your crew to be. And uh, there is a page 144 of the book has um, the questions for crew. There's concept and then power tag questions and weakness questions. Again, the crew is going to have three power tags and one weakness tag. <clears throat> and the mystery or identity for... The crew theme is going to be the commonality for all of you, whatever that is. I'll give some examples in the book two on 148. And then it gives some quick starts. Like if you want to, like they give you several examples, casual detectives, company men. So like the mystery or identity is follow protocol. 
and you get things like company car, company database, bend the rules. And then weaknesses are liability. They kind of take all of the different um, types of companies and give you some templates to work from. So when you guys are all done with character creation, then we begin to explore your characters. I will ask you questions about your character so that i am got a clear understanding of what's going on. with your character. I may ask you to clarify um, Oh, do I still have that crew? Oh yeah, let me delete that. I was wondering why an old crew was showing up on your character sheet. All right, there we go. So I do have a question. One of my tags turned yellow. I see that. But why is that? What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> That's what, so I'm asking you. Okay. So <clears throat> um so you chose letter G of expression. I think it has something to do with that. Hold on here. Mm -hmm. I don't always know what the mod designer was thinking when they did things. I've brought up several questions. It's just one guy in Germany who did it all, and he doesn't apparently do English very well. Sort of, but um, he doesn't. There's no support for this mod. The one guy that does support it in the City of Mist um, Discord is a guy who doesn't even use it all that much. It's like, well, in my game, when I used it last year, it uh, it did this. So I don't know. I'm like, well, that was a good support answer. Thank you. Thanks for that. All right. Uh, G, who resides in your enclave? Why do I'm looking at on? Oh, because I clicked the wrong one. Dang it. Expression, not enclave. Okay. Misclick. I'm like, that question didn't make any sense. What additional expression, not necessarily related to the main one, does your mythos have? Sometimes they're like sub, um, like secondary, related to another tag kind of thing. And this is not the case, so. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know why it's highlighted in yellow. Why is that? Did you write it in all caps or did it do that for you? Uh, no, because if I open it, it's not written in all caps. Yeah. yeah in fact, the only thing capital capitalizes the B. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great. I don't see why either. Um, Those things happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know why I did it. I'm stumped right now. I will figure it out. Um, that's the first time I've seen that. Ray, 
What did you do? <laughs> we used to roast marshmallows by the campfires at Camp Wakanda. <laughs> has gone bye-bye. I, uh, while they're thinking of the other thing, and, and while Richard's trying to, you know, find out why that tag's changing color, getting mm -hmm. on to the, um, uh, the crew theme, Company Men, I just want to run an idea by everybody, and if you don't like this idea, it's fine. It's just an idea that occurred to me. Um, what if the company that we all are working for is like an insurance company. Like, and I know that sounds boring. <laughs> but you know, maybe we're just an assembled team that's just trying to investigate, you know, possible insurance fraud and that's where we keep encountering all these little mysteries. And my antique dealer thing could be a side gig. Like uh, that's why I'm doing this because like, well, the antique dealer job is good, but mm -hmm. the economy being what it is, it doesn't it's not a steady paycheck. And this is a steady paycheck. Um, and it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a boring job. It's supposed to be just go here and get the widow to fill out this paperwork and nobody cares. Um, but, but but it's not but, because we keep encountering the mist. Well, I mean, also, the look at something like. Like leverage. Yeah, like Timothy Hutton's or uh, Timothy's character was basically an insurance investigator, which is where he right. developed all of these skills yeah. Uh, that let him recognize con men and, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. So Cause there's I mean, a lot of rackets around insurance, you know, and then you're like, why did this building blow up? We have to go find out why this building blew up. You know, like, <laughs> I thought that might be an interesting, uh, you know, concept, uh, you know, cause I, I couldn't think of, and granted company men could be, we were all FBI agents or we're all, Ops. I mean, anything could be a company man when you when you really think about it. But I just thought that might be something a little more interesting. You know, it's, it's something a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. You know, there are certain things cops and FBI agents can't do, and there are certain things insurance investigators and salesmen can and can't do. But they're not quite as hardcore as what cops can and can't do. No, that uh, it just. What do you guys think about that? Um, it's okay if you yeah, don't like it. It's fine. Like, it's just I, a... I had I had an idea for it um, because uh, we want to go with the uh, tapestry thing for the city. Yeah. So, um, like it could be some kind of agency that, um. Catalogs, uh, catalogs the uh, different realities that um, make up the city, and maybe uh, try. Kind of like a localized Men in Black kind of a thing. Interdimensional disasters. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily bad. It's. Because I'd like to start slightly deeper into the into the mystery. <clears throat> like that doesn't you don't even have to we don't even have to play people who are actually aware of what the agencies really do it. They just yeah, tell you uh, go there, catalog this, uh, you know. Combine like, those count, ideas. Count the bison ducks in this um, <laughs> in this um, area or whatever. It's just what if you combine? What if you kind of merge those two ideas, <laughs> Daniel? What yeah, what what if you're that. in a department that uh, ultimately that seems to be what you're being asked to do, but it's of a much more mundane sounding company, and you're in this you're you're starting a new department. <laughs> Risk assessment in the exactly. In the so it still could be like insurance. And you are going out to do an insurance investigations, but you seem to be given these kinds of, um, you know, different reality almost. Like, like you're, so you're kind of being sent out. And maybe you are new at it, so you don't really understand the, 
overall motives of the com- of the company and the leadership in the company. Who knows what the board of directors is up to, but for now, this is your job. You got to go and check out this weird stuff and, you know, it seems odd. And so you're going to go try to define it for the insurance company. So it could be that they're trying to, yeah, like risk assessment. They're trying to figure out what they can insure, what they can't insure, how much will it cost if they do insure it, and they need your research or your investigation to kind of do that. And so in some of those cases, it may be looking to see if this claim is fraudulent or this person wants to insure this. You know, are we going to be able to do that because of some unusual anomalies in their in their application or whatever, right? They certainly yeah. could do stuff like that. Um, but I also think this would lead you into wanting to learn more and investigate more about what's going on, which, you know, this one does seem weird, that kind of thing. And then when the company says, move on to the next one and you don't want to, that could be an interesting yeah. conflict. Sure. Something uh, like that. Something, so you know, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like that idea, too. You know, like, oh, we're going to hire some new people. We're trying to build this thing. And, you know, the company is, in the beginning, maybe using us. You know, just follow the procedures, you know. Just look in the, everything is in the book. Just do exactly what it says in the book. And don't worry about it. Da, 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 da. Paycheck every two weeks. There you go. <laughs> you know that kind of thing um but don't then die. that leads to yeah don't die <laughs> <laughs> then that leads to to more mystery and more like well wait a minute this this is not the standard insurance investigation i thought we were going to be doing so something like that i i just thought that might be like like one thing i like in noir movies like it, there's ton, tons of noir films where you know the the main character is the detective like that's typical that's staple mm-hmm. but i always find the uh, really interesting noir films are where the main character is not a detective or a cop you know like if they're a beat reporter or they have some just normal everyday job and then they get sucked into this you know yeah, like situation Neo. yeah exactly um Mr. Anderson. Yeah, one of one of my um, favorites, and it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but you know the guy um, is in Better Call Saul, right? Um, God, what's his name? I, I've got the entire internet here. At my yeah, Bob Odenkirk. Um, Bob Odenkirk made a little film for Netflix, kind of a dark comedy, and it was a detective noir film, but he wasn't a detective. He was a greeting cards writer. He did for a living. He wrote greeting cards. And he gets into this weird situation with this other company who's a bunch of greeting card writers, and then there's a murder mystery, and there's money involved, and there's a widow, and it's a classic noir story, but mm-hmm. it's all based on greeting cards. And I was like, that's a very interesting kind of take, you know. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of room for that in this game. Not not to say let's let's be a greeting card company. That that was obviously a joke <laughs> for the, for the movie. It was a running gag in the film. But, right. but uh, or... no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but but I just thought if we're gonna do this, let's do something a little bit off the beaten path, you know. I like Daniel's idea of maybe jumping more deep into the myth end of it right from the get go. You know, I like that idea. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, the name of the movie was called Girlfriend's Day. So if you ever want to check that out. Because it's like they want to come up with a new holiday, Girlfriend's Day. And then we'll sell tons of cards you got to buy a card for your girlfriend and girlfriend day. You know, that's like the joke that's running into it. What? Where are where are the identities at? Oh, there is no. I found it. Never mind. I found it. It's just down further.
Yeah, I just watched another movie with him that just came out. What was it? Um, where he was just trying to be the boring guy. And then oh, he's yeah. sick and tired of it. And he just kicked everyone. It's like He was yeah, the cleanup true. man or he was the guy. What was it called? The auditor. He was an auditor. I don't know what the movie was called. Yeah, it's like he was just a normal everyday mild you know, manner father and all this fun stuff it turns out he actually had skills he used to be in the cia and all this stuff and yeah just not just the cia to... everyone was yeah. scared to crap if they like they pulled up his file or whatever they hacked in and got the, they're like okay have a nice day i'm leaving i'm gonna go someplace where i'm not telling anybody and i don't want to be anywhere <laughs> near what's gonna happen with this guy i he doesn't know me i don't know him i'm gone and they're like whoa yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was pretty fun that was all right, can you? Yeah, nobody. It's called nobody. Right. Can you take a look at mine and tell me? Yes. You know? Yes, I can. Let's do that. So, if we're playing um, an insurance company crew, then someone has to actually be the insurance clerk. <laughs> Well, you don't really have to be the clerk. Sometimes insurance companies yeah. send out investigators to figure out what happened to their pro. You know, if it's like if it was a, like let's say it was a piece of artwork that was insured, they'll send us out to figure out what happened to the artwork. Was it stolen? Was it destroyed? You know, why is this claim being made? Um, and if it's and if it was stolen, and you know, we may have to investigate, help with the the legal ramifications of that. So there's. Different types of things you can do with that. Yeah. There's a lot of flexibility in that. Hold on again. One one more second, guys. Let me, I'm going to mm -hmm. mute mine. I'll be right back. Okay. Stop. Whoa. Oh. Back. The animal is coming out. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. She's hyper. I have one like that too. Uh, I kind of like the idea of a natural insurance clerk who is just barely hanging on to reality with his three meters of being uh, King Solomon. Yeah, man. Uh, that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe, maybe his love of like numbers is the only thing keeping him grounded, <laughs> exactly. or something. He is actually gonna be good with numbers. I'm gonna take that as a tag. Don't know if it, it will be helpful in any in any way, but it's gotta be there. Okay, I'm back. Yes, yeah, so I'm so looking at Oren is... Murphy. Did you have questions in yep. particular? I just want to make sure that uh, it looks good to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure I did it right. You have a yellow tag that's all screwed up. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> you know, maybe it's there just to uh, distract you from the real Could problems be. with the character. Could be. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm so inclined to, like, delete it and recreate it. Um. Maybe it's just mad that it was not the main theme. Like, why am I not <laughs> the star of this show? Maybe. <laughs> it is a sub. It is a sub. That's why. Okay. So uh, what I did is I clicked on the tag and I chose a sub tag of. And then I picked skills of the warrior. I don't know if that's uh, what makes sense. Could be sure. the Spear of Achilles or the Rage of Achilles. It's a sub tag of one of those. And then that made it not yellow and blue. So that's telling you, A, fix this. And that's all, I guess. All right. all right. The icon over to the right of the um of the tags, that's how you burn a tag. So in City of Mist, a mechanic um you can fall back to and may want to fall back to. Um 
is called burning a tag. And when you burn a tag, it crosses it out. So I'm going to show you skills of the warrior going bye bye. Oh, no. Okay. So you burn that tag. It turns red. It's no longer available for use. But on the action in which you burn this, you only have to do it with one tag. And the action that you're doing it with automatically succeeds as if you rolled a 10 with a power of three. Okay. And then you have to do something to unburn the tag. Usually downtime would be required to unburn a tag. Unparalleled warrior. Invulnerability. So you have a bonus tag of invulnerability. One, two, three, four. Uh, so you'll need another um, oh, fuck. weakness, weakness that's tag. Right. That's what I was missing. Okay. Yep. See, that's why you're here to. I was just testing you. You passed. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I was really just looking for someone to some to, for someone who summons demons, but for some reason, King Salmon is linked to ancient flying airships. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Ezekiel. I don't know. Um, Elijah, actually. Just chariots for this one. You know, he's not a king. Gotcha. Um, intelligence collection. So finding the truth. Okay, yeah. so for mysteries and identities, you want to... So for identities, you make a statement that um, says the purpose of the Logos. So um, instead of tools of the trade, you may say, well, let's see. Um, go back up to possession. Choose an identity for this theme, an absolute statement that captures an attitude, motive, or belief related to your possessions. For example, um, for surveillance gear, for example, the government is going down. For a pawn shop, everyone deserves a second chance. For a, <laughs> for a getaway car, they'll never catch me. the identity right yeah so that's the identity is a absolute statement and it, um so tools of the trade might be uh the identity might be like uh if they ever find these i'm going away for a long time <laughs> i don't know like got a declan lestrange pdf open and like on his He's got a logos uh, personality, and it's called "Been Around." You know, he's like he's, he's streetwise, and his identity is in the end. I can only rely on myself. You know, mm -hmm. that's 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 a pretty good one. So what happens wanna... is, as a as a game master, I use mysteries and identities to counter each other, to play against each other, and then nice. I I use them to present you with a hard choice. Like you have to choose one or the other. Yeah. So do you want to dig more into the mystery and learn more about the mystery? But if you do, you have to forsake the identity. So now you have to, that, that forces you to crack or fade whichever way you choose. Got it. So Got it. 
those present little dilemmas for your characters. I, I, I look for those when I do my little session prep or whatever. I look for how can I, who can I put in a tough spot just for moral sake or decision sake. And then when that comes up, then you're like, oh, it's, uh, this must, I have to make a hard choice here, which is actually a move. It's not a move that requires a die roll. It's just a move where it says, this is what you do when this happens. You need to mark fade or crack, whichever way you chose. Um, so the same goes for mission. Yeah, I just changed that one. Uh, trying to change positions. Now. Yeah. It's very thought provoking to have these questions. I, so I like this better than, than fate, which is just like, oh, just come up with some aspects. Uh, okay. You know, there's some guidance here, which I like. So, yeah. I like fate when you do it in a nice. specific, specific yes. setting. Like, like yeah. fate of, like the fate of Cthulhu. When you do a very yeah. specific story with it, then it works. But if you try to just be open world, it's too much. Yep. Yeah. They won't get away with it. Who? Who's not going to get away with it? So the the the, the 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 character's background story is his squad was killed, and he was the only survivor because that's when he first displayed his invulnerability. Mm -hmm. So uh, his squad was basically uh, so um, he doesn't know what happened, but he knows that the mission went wrong. The mission went sideways. His people were killed. Um, and that's what he's trying to. That's the general mystery of his uh, ambition set is, you know, who was behind the death of his squad. That's what his mythos is driving at. And he wants to find the truth and, and we, we get some payback. So they're not going to get away with it. That makes sense. Yep. And I like and how they, you filled in a lot of the descriptions. That's great. That's really good. Um. Yep, yep. I'm stuck on this identity with this possessions thing, though. I just, my, <laughs> I just don't. Uh, the possessions identity. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I mean, it says what you intend. It says one thing is you could try exploring what you intend to do with your possessions. Mm -hmm. Um. But that's the mission. The mission is, that's, you know. So. Um. <coughs> When I try to do the extra um, weakness, yep. it says confirm grant a free improvement for taking two plus weaknesses tags. So just say no to that. Um, yes. And see what happens. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So um, 
Because you have an improvement in your bonus, uh, your bonus tag. Wait, what? Oren's sleep does not work while he is asleep. While he is asleep. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> My sleep doesn't work when I'm sleeping. There you go. I've... It is fixed now. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so I think that's better. <clears throat> yep. All right, so there are a couple more questions to ask you now that you're kind of done with your initial character build. And they are... We may need to, over over the next few sessions or whatever, we may fine tune these. These are not etched in stone. You may go, yeah, that wasn't quite what I was thinking. It works better this way or um, so forth. Like I, I may decide that your some of your tags are too broad. I may ask you to narrow them a little bit, that sort of thing. We will just see. It looks okay to me on the surface. I, I I have some questions, but the the theme of a lot of power by the apocalypse games is um, play to find out. So I use that in, in my game prep as well. Like, what will they do in this situation, or how will this character react when this happens? And the answer is, it's play to find out. So I use that with character creation as well. Um, so choosing mysteries, um, it does say for the rest of you still working through those. Um, A character's mythos represents the mysterious and unknowable forces within. It always uses her uh, as the pronoun. So when I say her, it just means the player character. Uh, the unknowable forces within her. Uh, forces that necessarily drive her to question her current position in life and in the world. Therefore, 
A mythos theme revolves around a question that the character seeks to answer, a mystery. A character's logos stands for persona, the ordinary person she is, or at least believes she is, everything that is stable in her life and in her psyche. Therefore, a logos theme is built around a statement to which the character must adhere an identity. So um, the questions are often, what does the mythos, what does the, the legend want you to explore? Or what do you want to explore to learn more about your legend? So you may um, live in a dream and not even realize that you're channeling Morpheus, for example. So how would you, what kind of questions would need to be asked for you to dig further into that to learn the answer? <clears throat> uh, so your questions are good. Who's behind the death of my squad? Well, actually, um, I'm not sure that would be um, a good mystery for Bastion. So let me look at Bastion because those questions would have to do with your invulnerability. Questions about that. Questions about Achilles. Uh, Please. Um, See, the way I was looking at it was he was going, you always want to protect your squad mates, right? And Bastion seemed like protection would be the realm of Bastion, right? Oh, absolutely. For sure. Bastion is, um, and so that's what your shield makes sense, your own, it's like your, uh, your resistance to harm, for sure. But um, let me think if there is... Wondering who or what you are meant to protect. Um, questions about threats you're meant to stop. A dark desire to find out what could be your undoing. So a, a, maybe an interesting mystery question might be, what is there that can, that can hurt me? Um, something along those lines. I'm just trying to think because right now you're really focused on the one um, event. Like you, there was a mission that went bad. So you're now on a mission to find out what happened there and how or, or, or you know, your mystery might be why am I still alive? which might deal with some of the guilt of you being yeah. the sole survivor. Exactly. And then maybe um, I like the, how can I control my rage? Um, But likewise, you could say, um, are there any limits to my rage or something like that? You know, I'm just, again, uh, inviting you to explore, uh, but I like, can I control or how, how can I control it? Uh, that's good. All right. So the get revenge identity statement. Um, I will get yeah, revenge. It says, uh, Gabe, you just want to elaborate that? Uh, I can elaborate that. Yeah, uh, let me see. Because I do see right now that for um for your mythos themes those are almost like a little bit more pacifist which is cool because i think achilles being a warrior um how can i control my rage like i keep this under control not just to focus on whatever it is you're trying to accomplish but maybe 
in some way you are trying to like like the the manifestation of your legend is because you are so focused on the mission if you solve your mission will achilles vanish from your life and i think that's a good mirror because um the idea is now that he's not in the military he's kind of lost and he needs this mythos to help basically give him purpose yeah so he does, you know, but the, but the thing is, the mythos is not giving him the purpose. The mythos seems to be the vehicle, but it's like it's enabling the purpose, I guess. But but almost in contradiction to the purpose, because you're talking about not control, like controlling your rage instead of letting your rage loose. Right. So well, that's because monsters... the because the uh, the the weakness is when he loses control, uh, he, he basically just kills everything. He can't use non-lethal force. Yeah. Uh, so getting angry is real bad. Because <laughs> when because when you when nobody can stop you when you're the unparalleled warrior and nobody has a chance basically, it's real bad for you to lose your temper. So he's got to learn to control that. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, however, it does. It's kind of conflicting. He doesn't want to kill everything, but when he finds the people behind, uh, you know, when he finds the forces behind his squad's death, he may just let the animal off the leash. Right. Right. So, undoing all the work he's done to that point. So, what connects you to the other two? To the other two what? The other two characters in your crew. Uh, that's a real good question. Um, so we're doing the whole accompany men. Um, so I, the way I see it probably is I'm new to this job. And, uh, you know, like most military guys, you're going to try to fit into the squad that you know you're you're kind of that there's a very pack mentality so i'm gonna want to be looking out for those guys so that nothing happens to them like what happened in my other squad okay so how do you see yourself uh, having come into contact or friendship with the others uh on the job and that, and that, and that, our our thing is we're trying to be company men. You can, sure. I'm, I'm okay with all that. I'm just, I'm asking what your thoughts are on how do you think that came to be? Yeah, I think that or Orn doesn't really, or doesn't have any like civilian friends. He's just gotten out of the military, you know. Um, and he thought where he thought he was going to be for much longer, but uh, after the incident, he was, uh, you know, basically shuffled off. Um, because they couldn't, nobody could explain what happened or why he survived, and it looked shady that he was the only survivor. Um, so, uh, now he's in the civilian world, he's trying to rebuild his life, and he's met these guys, you know, in, probably in, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, drawing a blank. We, you know, you get to work and they have to have the whole, uh, oh, come on. indoctrination. I guess indoctrination is a good word, but, uh, onboarding process. Uh, okay. you know, he's met these guys during the onboarding process. He's going to, these are going to be people he's working with. And so, uh, you know, that's where he, I think where he's going to become friends with them. Cool. All right. And he's going to immediately, you know, try to be the overprotective big brother because that's what he does. So. All right. Cool, cool. Um, Declan, are you stuck anywhere? 
I know. I'm just populating all the stuff from that PDF into here. Do I, I do have one thing though? Like I've noticed sometimes I'll click on you know the a theme tag to open up and type stuff, and then it just just disappears. Yeah, it goes behind your character sheet, probably. Yeah, that's what yeah. I. Was, that's pr that's what I thought. Is it's like why is it going? So if in? you it, now in Foundry, if you go to the title bar and you double click, it minimizes, and oh, okay. then you have to find the title bar. It'll be minimized somewhere, and then double clicking again will maximize. Ah, uh, I see. I that's super useful. Thank you. Yeah, that just made my life a lot easier. I can minimize those things and keep them at the top. Yeah, and, and you, I should have the pop tabs. out on here. I don't know why it's not in here. Let me go look and see why. There is a pop out module that I use in all of my games. Maybe because I just did I uncheck everything? What the heck? It says nothing checked. So I wonder if the conversion to version 11, that probably is what happened. That's exactly what happened. That happened yeah. on the others, but um, so I converted to Foundry V11. And it took out a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to put him back in. It'll make the um, the VTT restart when I do. But uh, I'll let you know before I save it because it will. It won't. It won't give you a choice. It'll just restart on you. Um, so let me make sure I pick the right ones. Uh, yeah, we're missing the 3D. Everything's missing. Okay. So chat images. Scene enhancements. Dice so nice. That makes 3D dice roll on the screen. So that's what I was missing too. Uh, There's no measuring your distance in any of this. So um, I don't do anything. I don't care about ranges or distance because it's just cinematic. So it's whatever. Uh, um, <clears throat> I think I will do GM notes in the GM screen. That's missing. Uh, chat notifications. Yep. One one last thing. When I click on select the theme book, like when I look at Declan Lestrange themes, he's got adaptation, training, personality. Training is gunslinger. Personality has been around. Adaptation, that's living in the dream. That's the whole dream world thing we talked about. But his other uh, theme is his occupation, dubious antique stealer. And in the theme book, I don't see <clears throat> occupation. Ah, uh, routine. It's routine. Ru ah, okay, got it. Routine. Got it. That was that was gonna be my next question. Did they change the name of it? So routine, dubious antique, dubious antique stealer.
Okay, so if I can interrupt what you're doing, I would like to restart the VTT. Okay. Sure. So go ahead and close out what you're working on. It should automatically save your stuff. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hit save and it'll reload. You all ready? In a minute. On your mark, get set. Oh. Daniel, you ready for me to restart? He's falling asleep. <laughs> no, I just um, taking a nap. Mute myself when I'm okay. No, you're fine. Is it cool if I restart? You, you close your yeah, window. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. All right, here we go. Okay, so this will put it. Now you have a pop out up in the title bar also. So if you have more than one screen, then you should be able to. Um, Pop that out into another window that you can move to your other screen if you want. That's mm -hmm. handy for moving your character sheet out of the way or whatever. <clears throat> um, do you have scene enhancements? Oh, uh, not compatible with 11. Okay, hold on. Wait, good. Oh, there it is. All right. I don't know if it's going to reload again, but I just removed one that is not compatible with 11. It's going to reload. Yeah, Sorry. it's reloading. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Now, no more errors. That's good. That module wasn't compatible with 11, so. Okay. Cool. Well. So are we able to upload, uh, oh, um, like images a, to your character yeah. sheet? Yes. Um, I don't think so, but I can't because the, the tokenizer module is like a GM only module. Um, so if you put it in, that's kind of what the, um, there's a character art channel in the discord. We kind of reserve for that. Where is that? Art, characters, and locations. So if you paste your image in there, I'll put it on your character sheet. Okay. Find that. Uh, I don't see that. Should be into the rift area. Um where the about us is, but about four or five more down. So what do you guys want to name your crew? Okay, but I'm gonna, can I share my screen a second? Yeah. I don't see what you're seeing. I don't see anything about art, anything. Further down? What happened? There is no further down. That's it. That is all I have. Interesting. Okay, hold on. Maybe because... Oh, the Rift's roll didn't apply to you. That's why. Okay, now you can. Ah, uh, okay. 
See, now I can see all sorts of cool stuff. Yep. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's stuck for John, but it didn't save when I checked it for you. But I did it for my phone. That's probably why. Okay. And then uh, I will create a private channel for you as well. And this will be the place you can put uh, uh, any secrets about your character that you want to share with me. So I'll create those now. Well, I get to know you guys better. Who is playing Oren, John, or Richard? Richard. Richard. Thank you. All right, so you have a new channel. John is playing Declan. And Daniel, do you have a name for your character yet? No. No name. Okay. Okay, so I've got some private channels where you can put now. Uh, this leads me to an important question about your character that needs to be answered, and that is secret pain. So, um, I'm trying to just get there and the rules open. So we've done a series concept. We've done character creation for the moment. It's in progress. Then we've got crew creation. And then, okay, so part of character creation is this. Um, first off, you want to answer th these two questions. One is, why did this particular mythos manifest through your character? Mm. And then the second question. So you can put these in your bio or you can put it in your private chat in the Discord. Uh, the bio on your character sheet might be a good place for that. The way that works um, inside the uh, uh, inside Foundry is... Um, when you mouse over the place like where description goes or MC notes goes, there is a little edit icon that shows up on the right hand side. And when you click it, it opens up an editor. And then there is a save icon at the top of that editor along with, with the toolbar. And you'll want to click save and close editor before you switch away so that it actually saves what you just spent time typing. I accidentally closed it and I can't get back in. Close what? Boundary. Oh, okay. So you uh, the, go back to the Discord and go to the what channel? The VTT channel. And I put it at the very bottom of the VTT channel. There is a game URL. Also, um, with 
the oh got a got all freaking ba-boom okay so uh the game url now that you've already accepted the invite that will just put you right into the game now also one more interesting thing is that you can up in the uh, uh icons at the top right there's a couple of gears or sprockets if you click on that, that lets you go into configure settings. You can configure some stuff. When you click on configure settings, you can scroll down to the where it didn't show up. Forge more awesomeness. All right, so it's not there. Next time you oh, can do nope, that. I, I got it on mine. Yep. The yeah, Forge more awesomeness install and when player you, application. So if you want that, it just installs a an app level browser that when you open that icon, it just launches the game. Oh, so same thing as like like with Discord. Like you can run it through your browser, you can run the install an app, that kind of a thing. Yeah, so if you do install app, it creates an icon, puts it on your taskbar that just goes to the game. It looks like the green Forge symbol and that will just launch into the desktop, whenever the, the VTT, whenever, whenever you want, just opens it directly. Cool. And it's in a kind of a, uh, missing all the other browser stuff like your favorites and the sidebar and stuff like that. So it's just the game. Um, I use that all the time because I like the clean interface. It doesn't have, it is still a browser and still yeah. got some stuff that shows up, but it's a little bit cleaner interface for popping into that. So anyway, that's that. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't show for me because I've already done that. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, just go right, wait, it's missing. No, it's there. Okay. <clears throat> Cool. All right. Um, Plus, you can go full screen with that, and you don't you're not licking all these yeah. other tabs and everything. So that is, that is exactly nice. exactly. So nice little nice little tool. Like all right. It. Yeah, and then when you pop out, it'll still pop out a separate browser window that also doesn't have anything else to it, just the whatever you popped out. So, so you could pop out the PDF, or you could pop out your character sheet. And still, it still interacts with the main window, even though it's on a separate window. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so those are the two questions that I want you to answer in particular. Is, why did this mythos manifest through your character? And what is your character's secret pain? And I will work on this with you uh, through the week um, in Discord. And so we can chat whenever you have time, pop in see what's new, um, poke around to past. Uh, you will you can benefit from some of the past conversations or past screenshots that I pasted up about various things. Um, so um, once we're done with that, then it's really just a day in the life. So we can actually begin next week once your characters are kind of solidified out and changed around you decide oh i think i want to do this instead or that instead um i'll look through your tags a little bit more thoroughly take some notes ask questions you can answer those questions and decide if you want to make a change or double down on your answer and i'll be like yeah cool <laughs> um and so we'll just go that route and see um where things begin and then next uh next sunday we will jump back into the game. We'll do the day in the life, which is, well, where are your characters and what are they doing on this normal day in their lives? And we'll take a little bit of time to role play that lets you start to kind of get into character, get into interacting with the other characters, get into interacting with the NPCs that are in your life, if there are any in your typical day. And then from there, um, we will go ahead and probably launch right into more of what Knights of Pain Town is all about and launch into the first uh, the first case file and act one, scene one. Sounds good. Good. All right. Yep. Good expo session. Looking Thanks. good. Yeah, and... had a good time. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing how all these characters play out. We'll have to see what Daniel comes up with. Interesting. Yeah, I, I got a bit stumped because <clears throat> well, I just found out that really the only reason King Solomon summoned any demons was to question them. 
and um, and uh, kind of find out how to, um, you know, send them back to hell, which is kind of weird. You could not summon them in the first place, but <laughs> it doesn't seem very useful for the game. But like, it's a lot of his premise. So there's a lot of other stuff to work with, but I don't but you know. certainly could do yeah. some like divination because you're doing, you know, oh, yeah. you could be, you know, yeah. I like yeah. And don't don't forget one of the big things about King Solomon was he literally asked a, a deep prayer to God to get like ultimate wisdom. You know, so yeah. there's your kind of know it all character, like like Richard was talking about earlier. So that could that could be a fun mythos to to shape. Yeah bring into this that could be really cool actually one of these theme books was divination just because of that and mm -hmm. yeah. like, i took the shimmer stone as the relic but i really wanted to summon some demons i was approaching the <laughs> like i kind of kind of wanted to try conjuration um so we'll, see. well you, you could still go with like lilith mother of demons yes. yep. you could go i mean there's lots of ways you could go I just never felt comfortable with playing women. I don't feel like I understand them enough. Well, you, you could, could go with Beetlejuice and have demons running all through you. <laughs> oh, I got demons running all through me. <laughs> a very common trope in this actual game is to play female legends inside male characters and vice versa. Yeah. It sounds complicated. I might, I might get to it. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, now that I know that the game is actually happening, because, like, uh, you know, two days ago, it could have been like, okay, it might happen two months from now or something like that. Yep. Yep. And now it's, so now I'm going to just step on it. I'll get it done. Good. All right, guys. Done. I, you can always hit me up in the Discord anytime you like, just to at mention to grab my attention in particular um, to it. Uh, otherwise, I'll be looking over your character some more, making some notes and uh, deciding how I'm going to uh, complicate all of your lives um, in Knights of Pain Town. All right, man. Good all deal. Right. All right, thanks for, thanks for coming, guys. Have a great week. Thanks Bye a lot. Have a good week, too. Talk to you soon. You got to wait. <laughs>